You make a living by getting, you make a life by giving. And I think that summarizes the whole volunteer experience, no matter where you are in your life. Steve came to Oz, I think in 2008, um, after he retired. Um, his wife was a ride coordinator, one of the volunteers who's what we call mission control, and they take calls from passengers requesting rides. And she said, my husband's retiring soon, I'm gonna send him to an orientation. And so Steve came and it was the beginning of a wonderful relationship with someone who's very dedicated to volunteering. For about 13 years, I worked with Fish of Laurel, uh, which is a combination soup kitchen, food pantry operation at the corner of Route 198 and uh, Route 1 that provides about 16,000 meals a year and provides pantry services to about 1,500 families. We didn't realize how many organizations he was involved with. I ran the kitchen, was maintenance coordinator, served on the board, and did a lot of other things, started as a volunteer and worked my way up. Steve's just like an Energizer bunny and he just is very enthusiastic and always has a smile on his face and always moving quickly. He just has a lot of energy and you know, um, and he's usually upbeat. So you know how that's kind of contagious. It isn't like, oh no, here it comes, you know, it's, oh, it's Steve. What's on your mind today, Steve? He's, he's just uh, an all around great person. He's the type of person you can walk up to and approach and it's like you've known him your whole life. And I ran into a 22-year-old. He was spending the night and I was chatting with him and I said, why are you here? He said, well, you know, my dad died, my mother remarried, I didn't get along with my stepfather, I started doing drugs, you know, I got kicked out and now I've got a bicycle, I don't really have a job, and I'm homeless. And I thought, you know, this could be my kid. She has a social safety net, he had none. And I think that's one of the things that influences a lot of people I know to volunteer. You know, you realize, especially when you see young people, that it could be your kid, you know, who falls off the bike and there's nobody there to pick him up. You could tell right away that he was going to be very dedicated, very willing to go beyond the role of volunteer driver and so Steve often volunteers for other opportunities that we have at Neighbor Ride. We provide transportation to Howard County seniors who are 60 and over and are independently able to get in and out of a car. We do medical, we take people to religious services, we take people to their volunteer activities, to, to the grocery store. What it means to me is first of all, in the most basic level, you get people to where they want to go. You keep people who can, we're such an automobile-based community, people who can no longer drive, sometimes only temporarily because of a medical problem, whatever, sometimes permanently because of age or impairment, particularly vision. Um, you keep them in contact, you know, you get them to the doctor, you get them to church, uh, you take them shopping, um, you take them to volunteer. I drove one woman for four years who was Older, much older than I was, she volunteered at Northwest Hospital once a week for six hours a day. Sometimes what happens when the volunteer in the office calls to give them the name of the driver, then you'll hear them say, oh, it's Steve. Oh, that's great, I like Steve. So um, because he drives frequently for us, then he does have quite a few of the passengers who know him well. He's very popular. We'll put a ride request in and they'll be like, please ask Mr. Steve, please ask if Mr. Steve can take me. He's just a great natured person and he's one of the few on this planet. And we need more of them. <laughs>